All right, everybody. Now our goal is to, uh, in this video, is to uh, apply what we just kind of talked about in regards to adding parallel arrays to our program and making this work. Again, what we're going to try to do in our program is create an array uh, that will actually hold all the names of the classrooms, okay? And then based upon the new user, so, you know, entering um, the classroom from a, maybe a combo box, uh, we would compare that to each one of these. And then when we find it, we will know the corresponding index, which then would relate to the corresponding location in the classroom cookies array that would hold the, uh, the total number of cookies for that particular classroom. Does that make sense? All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So what we got to do first is I change the, uh, instead of having them type in the name of the classroom, I guess I, since we have a selection of seven, uh, combo box should work out pretty well. And so what I did in the combo box is I named it, as you see right there, and I went ahead and created a collection uh, from happy, sneezy, doc, grumpy, dopey, bashful, sleepy, all the way through, okay? That's pretty much the only thing I actually did outside of putting that beautiful little uh, picture of the seven dwarfs up there for people who have no idea who the seven dwarfs are. Um, I don't know why I do this, but uh, anyway, who the seven dwarfs. Okay, so what do we need to do in our program? Well, uh, we had our original one here, uh, which is SHT cook, uh, Classroom Cookies Sold. I went ahead and made a few changes prior to starting this video, uh, so doesn't video doesn't get too long. And I, instead of having it as nine before, I went ahead and made it six elements, uh, but really it's seven elements, right? So six indexes, seven elements. Everything starts at zero uh, in VB. What I need to do now is create the parallel array that we just talked about. And in this case here, it'd be str uh, string, and it's going to be classroom, and we'll call it name, all right? To make it parallel, it has to be the exact same size, okay? And so, meaning the exact same number of elements. Both of them would have seven elements in there. That makes sense? That's why they're parallel. They're the same. Uh, the data type does not have to be the same. That's the power of this, and that's what's beautiful about it, okay? Now, as I just mentioned, what we need to do is uh, when the user enters, you know, from the, from the combo box and presses enter, we're going to loop through or look at or analyze, I guess, whatever you want to say, each one of these um, uh, entries into uh, this array. And once we find the one that they entered, we know the index in which we can now point to uh, the, the, the total uh, uh, the array, okay? Okay, the array with the totals in it, I should say. To do that, we're going to make sure that there's something in the array, okay, prior to them pressing enter, uh, or there's nothing to compare against. So what we got to do is populate this array prior to uh, them entering. So how do we do something like that? A couple different ways. You can do it programmatically. Uh, you can do that little input box like you did last, uh, your last assignment where you put the rain totals in there and you populated the array that way. Uh, so you can have a little situation saying, you know, a button that says populate the names of the classrooms. You could do that very easily. Uh, we already did it, like I said. Or what you can do is you can pre-populate it and hard code it uh, into your, your code here. For this situation, I think the hard coding makes a lot of sense since we, you know, we're dealing with the seven dwarfs and we actually know the names of the classrooms. So to do that, you put in curly brackets. See if I can find it. There you go and go ahead and populate it. So what we will do is go ahead and put in here the names of, and, we, and so we, what we do is we gotta put the, the content of each element, okay? And we're going to put that, and since it's a string, we'll put that in double quotes, okay? If it's not a string, you don't have to, and then we separate it by a comma. So doc, uh, let's see, dopey, uh, who we got? Doc, dopey, grumpy, and let's see, Doc, Dopey, Grumpy, Bashful, uh, Sneezy, do I have them all? And one, two, three, four, five, six, you probably never realize you go to college to watch your professor type in the names of the seven dwarfs. And of course, right now, you're probably all getting sleepy watching me do this. And that sleepy is our last one. All right. Okay. The little seven dwarf trivia, who is the tallest of the seven dwarfs? Anyone? 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 Okay, it is Doc. Who is the shortest? <laughs> Topi. All right. <laughs> it's, it's, 
It's, there you go. Yeah, it did more than you ever asked for, right? Uh, now, okay, so we went ahead and pre-populated -pre everything, but we got this nasty yellow li red line, yellow line, yellow, red line that came across. Uh, so uh, what are we supposed to do with this? Well, when you get an error like this, hover over it so you can see the error message. Get used to reading these error messages. What's it telling me? Explicit is, is initialization is not permitted for arrays declared with explicit bounds. That's some fancy words, I think. I don't know. Maybe you understand what it says, but I, I actually do too. Here's what it actually says. We're explicitly, right there, we're explicitly initializing it. That's what we're doing right here. And in doing so, we cannot give it bounds. What bounds mean? That means we told it how big it should be. And so when you pre-populate an array like this, okay, you do not give it explicit bounds. In this case, tell it how big it's going to be. It will determine that on its own based upon how many entries you actually have in uh, the uh, curly brackets here. In this case, we had seven, right? Yep. Uh, and so it will actually create seven elements, all right? If you had 20, it would create 20 elements uh, and so on. Does that make sense? All right. That's how that works. All right. So, um, so we have our parallel arrays all defined, just like we kind of had here in our document. Beautiful. Okay. Now what we want to do is go ahead and get into the code. Well, here's my button submit. Okay. Based upon me clicking button submit, it's going to come here and validate like we did before. Uh, my prior program validated the classroom from 1 to 10. Remember, it was new, had to be numeric and so on. I'm not doing that this time, obviously. And the only thing I'm going to do for the classroom is to make sure that they chose something from the combo box. If they didn't, I will tell them that they need to choose something. Okay? Everything else is the same. So I didn't really change too much here. I'm going to go ahead and accumulate my cookies. Uh, that's the same uh, situation that we had before. And so in my accumulate cookies uh, procedure, if you recall how we did this, we took the classroom number that we had before, subtracted one from it, which represented the index. Hopefully that made sense to you. That's what we did in this. It all worked perfectly because our, our classroom numbers were, were, were labeled from 1 to 10. As we said before, this is not a perfect world. Very rarely does that happen. So what do we need to do differently? Well, what we need to do now is when they enter it and we come here to figure out where we accumulate, OK, we got to go find the classroom in the related parallel array. So how do we do that? We'll go ahead and put this here and I will go ahead and undo this. There you go. All right. And uh, and so let's kind of look at this code. So what are we doing? We're going to sit back and we're going to say uh, we're going to create a loop. OK, let's go ahead and bring this up here. We're going to create a loop. All right. And what this loop's going to do is it's going to loop through this array. We pre-populated it already, correct? Just like this is. And we're going to start at index 0, and we're going to say, is the, inter is the contents within uh, classroom name, this right here, okay, uh, equal to what they chose in the combo box? If it is, we'll add the cookies to the related location, so that index right there, and the classroom cookies sold. So classroom cookie sole array and the, that index. So the index that we're looping through represents the first location, zero. If it is equal to Sneezy, it would then put it into Sneezy's corresponding location in the classroom cookies array. Does that make sense? If it's not equal to Sneezy, it will loop through until it finds the one. So let's just pretend we hit happy, we selected happy. Yeah, so it, the first time through is uh, zero. It's sneezy equal to happy. It's not. It will end if go up and automatically increment the index to one. Is doc equal to uh, sneeze, uh, happy? The answer is no. Go back through it. Increment again. Is happy? And the answer is yes. It will now accumulate the cookies. And so if doc had some more, it would change that value right there. Does that make sense? Kind of cool, right? Not that much harder, uh, not a lot more code. And what the beauty of this is, is that uh, the code that's actually here is um, uh, it will work for an array size of seven or a million. Uh, <laughs> maybe not a million, I think, but, but it, really, it doesn't make any difference. This loop will take care of it. Again, the power of the loop and the power of the array will take care of all of this. So if we had 20 classrooms, 50 classrooms, whatever, this is not going to change whatsoever. All right. Getting it out, if we would come to show leader, 
how, what do we need to do here? So we're going to show leader. The only thing I'm going to change here is we'll make this a string now because since uh, before it was actually a number. And so we'll make that a string. And uh, let's see, str and then str. Okay. And so we're going to figure out who the classroom leader is and the cookie leader at this point in time. All right, so we're gonna come down here and this would be str again, since I'm passing this down and this will now be a string. There you go, beautiful. I wanna go ahead and copy this because I got one more on my display down here. Might as well just get it out of the way. And there you go. Perfect, so it's not gonna be by ref in this case. There you go, there you go, got it, okay. So uh, how are we going to do this? So what we're going to do is we're going to sit back, and it's going to be str2. Sorry, I'm looking up for you. I probably should have had this done for you. Okay, there you go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to loop through this. We're actually not going to change this code at all because what it's going to do is take the cookie sold, okay, and it's going to loop through that array, right? It's going to loop through this array and compare and see who has the highest one. If one is higher than another, so uh, we have eight in there. So the first time through, Sneezy will be winning until we keep looping through and we find 15, right? As soon as we find 15, we know what the index of 15 is. And what we got to do is make the leading classroom happy. All right? To make the leading classroom happy, <laughs> sounds kind of weird. Uh, all we need to do, I'm going to copy this code right here, is pass in the contents of that array with that index. So if it will actually take the contents of the array, the classroom cookie, so, oops, I'm, I got the wrong one. I'm sorry, let's do this one more time. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Here you are, this one right here. And this one, I'm sorry, there you go. The related classroom name to the index based upon that. And that's how this whole thing works. This code's gonna be available to you. Take a look at it, okay? Make sure you understand it and kind of go through. Let's go ahead and start this. Okay, come on. <laughs> and there's our little program. And so the user will pick Sneezy and put three boxes in there and press submit. And we'll have Dopey and we'll have 10 boxes, press submit. And we say show the leader, the classroom, uh, the winning classroom is classroom dopey with 10 boxes sold. And there you go. So you learn a little bit about parallel arrays and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Good job.